So I'm going to quickly cover the, the uh, pentose phosphate pathway, also known as the HMP shunt. Uh, the pentose phosphate pathway, we're going to go over just pretty much the basics of it. Uh, it is a little more complex than I'm going to make it. Uh, however, it does have a good clinical correlate that we can tie in, and I'll go over that at the very end. So let's go over the basics of the pentose phosphate pathway. What we're going to do is we're going to turn a glucose 6-phosphate into a ribose. And so a ribose is going to be a 5-carbon sugar, and that ribose is going to be used for nucleotide synthesis. So remember, uh, I do have a video on nucleotide synthesis. We're going to take a base, we're going to take a phosphate, and then we're going to add a, a ribose 5-carbon sugar. That will be our DNA backbone. And then, so we can make a ribose sugar out of this, and we can also make NADPHs. So NADPHs. What NADPHs are going to be used for are pretty much antioxidant effect. Uh, anything in the anabolic pathway, an NADPH will most likely be used. And, uh, and a good correlate would be uh, to reduce glutathione, and glutathione is going to be used as an antioxidant. And I'll cover that a little bit later. So let's talk about this pathway. Uh, hopefully you recognize it. Uh, if you're trying to think of what it is, it's found in glycolysis. So this is part of the glycolysis pathway, where we take glucose and eventually turn it into pyruvate. Uh, I left out some steps down there. So we take up glucose from the bloodstream, uh, we take it into cells and convert it into glucose 6-phosphate, so it's going to be very abundant. Uh, we convert glucose to glucose 6-phosphate via hexokinase or glucokinase. So now we're left with all this glucose 6-phosphate. It can either go down the glycolysis pathway like normal, or the body can shunt it. We can turn it into the pentose phosphate pathway. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to use an enzyme. And this is the very important enzyme. Oh, that's not going to work. Uh, let me find another color here. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is going to be the enzyme. The glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme, that's going to steal some of this glucose 6-phosphate from the glycolysis pathway and turn it into the pentose phosphate pathway. So what are we creating? We're creating a glucone 1,5-lactone, uh, a lactase 6-phosphate. Lactose 6-phosphate. So let me see if I can write it. Glucose-1,5-lactose-6-phosphate. All right, not as important of the name, however, uh, it's this enzyme that I really want to spend some time on. There is a good clinical correlate, and that kind of ties everything together. So we'll talk about that at the very end. Uh, however, right now, um, just know that you create an intermediate. Also, you can create another molecule of its 6 phosphogluconate uh, six phos phosphogluconate via enzyme. It's a really long, unimportant enzyme. Uh, so just know that there's an enzyme that's used to make that. Uh, what I do want to point out, however, is both of these reactions, both of these reactions take an NADP and turn it into an NADPH. H, same thing here. So we create some NADPH molecules. So if we look back up to the basics, there's our, sec there's our component of uh, the basics. There's our NADPH. So we're taking this glucose 6-phosphate, a few reactions. We're going to create an NADPH molecule. Uh, just going to turn the camera here just so I can make sure everybody sees what I'm writing. All right, so we have uh, this 6-phosphogluconate uh, that eventually gets converted into a 5-carbon sugar, which can eventually be turned into a ribose sugar. So that ribose, I think this is a ribulose sugar, and that'll eventually get turned into a ribose, so a ribulose uh, phosphate. 
not important. However, what is important is we can turn this into a ribose, which will be used for DNA synthesis and a host of other cellular activities. So the body just created some NADPHs if they need it or some ribose. What's really interesting is, let's say we don't need the ribose. Uh, what we can do is we can turn this 5-carbon sugar back into a fructose 6-phosphate and a glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecule. So what our body essentially did is we shunted off a little bit of glucose 6-phosphate through a series of reactions. We created some NADPHs that we can use, and then we spit a fructose 6-phosphate back into the glycolysis pathway and a glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate back into the pathway. So, or our body can say, no, actually we're not going to feed it back into the system. We need to use this to create ribose. So our body has some different options. We can use it to make NADPHs. We can use it to make ribose sugars. And then whatever we don't use, we can put back into the system. Uh, notice how it's just one step down. So we created a fructose 6-phosphate molecule. So uh, we really didn't lose too much. Uh, so now let's get to our clinical correlate. Uh, I did skip an awful lot of steps. There's a lot of different reactions that will take place. Uh, however, for our sake, it's not that important. What I want to focus on is a disorder called G6PD, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. And to do this, I'm going to write, sit down because I'm not that short. So G6PD, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. So what it is, is it's going to be an X-linked disorder. And what we're talking about is we're not able to take that glucose 6-phosphate and shunt it into the pentose phosphate pathway, also known as the HMP shunt. So what we're going to have is we're going to have decreased NADH, NADPH production. So we're not able to make our NADPHs. Well, this is a problem. Because NADPH, like I said, is going to be used for glutathione production, which is an antioxidant in red blood cells. So we're going to have decreased glutathione. And that decreased glutathione is going to mean we're not going to be able to protect our red blood cells from oxidation. Oxygen is a very volatile molecule. Even though it's everywhere around us and our body needs it, uh, oxygen is pretty dangerous itself. Um, our body has a lot of defenses since we've evolved uh, to have these defenses, but oxygen by itself is very damaging. So we're going to have uh, increased reactive oxygen species. What that means is our body's not able to protect against oxygen. We're not able to negate the oxygen's effect. So we're going to have increased reactive oxygen species. You'll see G6PD in stressful situations. Uh, the symptoms will come on during stressful situations, like infection. Infection is a stress on the body. So uh, the symptoms of this G6PD will be exacerbated. They'll be made worse during an infection, uh, during stress. And then also there are some metabolic stresses like fava beans. If you have a question that says fava beans, it's such an obscure uh, food. I've never had a fava bean myself, but if you see a question with fava beans, be thinking G6PD, because that, that goes hand in hand. All right, so stressful situations will require the body to produce more NADPH, but if we have that deficiency, our body can't make this NADPH, so we see symptoms. So some of the symptoms of, of a different marker, some of the symptoms of this G6PD will be will be uh, neonatal jaundice. So, neonatal jaundice. And we might see uh, neonatal jaundice, which will lead to an increase in bilirubin. Increase in bilirubin. If we have a large increase in bilirubin, it can lead to kernicterus, which is pretty much the Bill, uh, Billy Rubin within the brain causing neurologic symptoms. Uh, it's an emergency. So we have neonatal jaundice, or we have a hemolytic anemia. This is going to be a big one, too. Um, 
the hemolytic anemia. So why do we get a hemolytic anemia? Well, red blood cells requ require glycolysis. They can't go through the Krebs cycle to make their ATP. So, uh, so these red blood cells are going to exclusively use glycolysis. And red blood cells interact with oxygen intimately. They're going to they're gonna touch oxygen on a daily basis. So they're going to need to create a lot of NADPH to protect themselves versus this reactive oxygen. And a G6PD person typically presents in black, black uh, people more than white people. People with G6PD cannot protect their cells using glutathione. They can't regenerate that glutathione to protect against the oxygen. So they're going to have red blood cell dysfunctions. And they're going to have Heinz bodies. So Heinz bodies in their red blood cells. What are Heinz bodies? Well, it's going to be denatured hemoglobin. The oxygen is going to react with the hemoglobin in the red blood cells. It's going to denature the hemoglobin. So you're going to have these buildups of denatured hemoglobin, which is going to be simply a Heinz body. So you're going to see inclusions, cytoplasmic inclusions within the red blood cell. So we're going to see cytoplasmic inclusions in the red blood cell, but so will macrophages. Macrophages, so red blood cells travel through your body, they'll travel to the spleen, and in the spleen you have macrophages. And macrophages are going to uh, be like your phagocytic cells, they're going to eat stuff. Well, they're going to see this red blood cell with Heinz bodies, and they're going to say, that doesn't look right. They're going to eat, they're going to take bites out of the red blood cell, they're going to bite out those Heinz bodies, and you're going to create bite cells. And the name is exactly how, how you think it would be. These macrophages are taking bites out of the red blood cells because they see Heinz bodies. So if, if you hear the word Heinz body, bite cell, fava beans, G6PD deficiency, goes hand in hand. So this is the pentose phosphate pathway with a little bit of a clinical correlate with G6PD. Uh, I did leave out an awful lot, however the basics are we're going to create NADPHs. We're going to create ribosis. And if we don't want to create ribosis, we're going to put the stuff back into our glycolysis pathway. Everything's recycled. Uh, and then also, uh, Heinz bodies is a high yield term. Bite cells is another high yield term. If you hear uh, a pathologist say you see bite cells under a microscope, think a G6PD deficiency due to not enough NADPH which is going to recycle our glutathione, which is going to protect against reactive oxygen species. All right, uh, that should be it for the pentose phosphate pathway. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Any comments, I always appreciate comments. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you very much.